Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. This is Sean Foyt, and I am here at the legendary Morningstar Church. And I'm here with Pastor Rick Joyner, who has been such a hero to so many in the faith for so many years. Um, quick side note, I grew up as a musician in Virginia Beach. Um, when I first learned how to play guitar, I was glued to the Morningstar old school <laughs> tapes. And at that time there were tapes and uh, I think maybe CDs just started. And man, I got really cut my teeth in the prophetic watching those, listening to the conferences. And then throughout the years, I've been able to be here. I've been able to be at the conference, been able to do live albums here um, and, and been able to grow in our relationship. And I'm, I'm just so grateful for this ministry. I'm grateful for Rick and everything that he's written. He's just, he's just been such a hero to us. So I would love for you to just share whatever is on your heart. We'll just have a conversation and a dialogue. You've seen a lot in your years across America. Well, I have. I've been blessed to see a lot across the world. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, as I was sharing with you a few minutes ago, last year was our best year. But, you know, since 2014, every year has been better than the previous year. Wow. And then I went back in my whole life. Every decade has been better than the previous. <laughs> <laughs> it's just getting better. I, yeah. That's all I can say. It's, it's getting so exciting. No question, things in the world are being shaken. Right. Uh, everything that can be shaken is being shaken. But we... Uh, I think we're poised for the harvest. Um, I think what's happening in Ukraine and Russia right now is setting the stage for what will be the greatest harvest wow. in the church age. Wow. Now, that was the very first prophetic word I ever received when I was a brand new Christian. Wow. What was it? That the greatest harvest of the church age yeah. is going to be birthed out of Russia. Wow. And I wouldn't... Yeah, you know, I always What year Russian. was that? That was probably 71, 72. Okay. okay. And I just gotten out of the military while I was in the Navy and we we're in constant, you know, being challenged by the Soviets at the time. But we had, you know, uh, I'd fall in love with Russian history and all that. I had a, you know, a love for Russia uh, spiritually, but that just came out of the blue. And I'd never received a prophetic word before that. Wow. I just, but I knew this didn't come from me. Right. And it was so loud and clear. And I never knew anyone else who saw that until I met Bob Jones. Right. And one of the first things he said to me was, you know about the revival in Russia, don't you? <laughs> I said, I do, you know. And uh, I'm so excited now. I know it's devastating what's going right. on in Ukraine. We've got a lot of people over there. We're trying to be engaged. But the main thing we're trying to do is help build the network or the net that can hold the catch that is coming. Wow. And they're seeing incredible miracles there. Wow. We had one group of people that were shut into one of the shelters yeah. for days. They went down there with a few boxes of cookies and a few gallons of water, and there were hundreds of them in the shelter. The cookies never ran out. <laughs> <laughs> My kids would love that miracle. Yeah. <laughs> the water didn't run out. Wow. You know, and it's in times like this when you see the greatest miracle. Right. We all want to see the great miracles. We just don't want to be in a situation where we've got to have one. Right. And, you know, they're seeing extraordinary things. Many are coming to the Lord. I mean, multitudes every day. Right. Including the Russian soldiers. Yeah. Uh, so it's, um, I think it's often the case, though, that such devastating things. Right. Um uh, or do have to plow the ground to prepare for right great move of God. But I'm just so excited about that. I think the things going on here, we're going to start to see yeah. so many things come together. How, how could if, if so if you're looking at the situation, take Russia and, and Ukraine, for example, how, how, how in the world could a normal person think or could a Christian think, how's revival going to come out of this? First of all, the word you got in the 70s was that revival would come from Russia. A it just said the greatest. I don't the greatest. Know, I don't okay. really know how to define that. Okay. The most people are what? Right, right. It was the greatest revival of the church age. I wrote it in my first Bible. Would come out of Russia. Wow, that is powerful. So I've been waiting. So ever how do since. you see that playing out right now 
in this situation? Like, like, I mean, Russia's attacking Ukraine. You have everybody around the world. Really, I mean, is and I tell people this because we had Russians that moved. Uh, my my parents took them in when they were fleeing communism. So in the mm-hmm. '80s, in the late '80s, I was just a little kid. They lived with us for three years. And, and they were the most Holy Ghost, spirit-filled, mm-hmm. incredible people. They showed up with one baby. They left our house with five. So they stayed there wow. for a couple years. And um, it, people don't understand across the world, there is some diehard revivalists in Russia right now. So, Absolutely. I mean, I, first of all, I want to yeah. start with that because they don't understand that the Russian church is not pro-Putin. You know, the Russian church is, is, is strong. They love the Lord. They're standing up. How, how do you see this war causing a revival there? Well, it's plowing the ground. Yeah. I mean, it's shaking the foundations there right. too. And I think one of the great things we're seeing that is significant, I think it's one of the things you've been doing. You've been imparting mm-hmm. courage mm-hmm. to the body, body of Christ. You've been boldly confronting strongholds. That to me is one of the most desperately needed characteristics we need today yeah. is courage. Now, I think we've seen amazing courage arise within the Ukrainians. Right. And, uh, and it's also courage to defend freedom. Right. We're going to see freedom fighters rise up all over the world. Say, we are not going to come under this totalitarian madness right. that is trying to take over the world. Yeah. And there, there is a great pushback. I think you're going to see things. I really thought when the Iron Curtain came down, which I was in Berlin really soon after that happened, that uh, I thought this is it. And great things happened in Russia. But it was all laying the foundation for what is now unfolding. You have thousands of solid leaders in Russia, mm-hmm. church leaders. Yeah. And... Uh, there are a lot of solid churches now. There's been a lot of, you know, after 70 years of persecution, it took a different character to arise and to walk in the faith in Russia than it has here. Right. And, uh, but I think they have a very solid foundation. I think they have everything. It's like all the ingredients are there for revival. Right. And one of the ingredients is dryness. Yeah. You know, fires burn better when it's dry. Yeah. And you know, good. it's like the dry bones. It took the dry bones that were very dry in Ezekiel 37 yeah. before they started yeah. moving together yeah. and becoming what they were called to be. So they went through a great wave of the spirit after the iron curtain came down. Then they've gone through a period of Shaking, dryness, right. and all that, yeah. that is meant to mature us. Right. That we all go through. Wow. But um, I mean, I love the prophetic <clears throat> perspective to look yeah. at something like what's happening there and to say the greatest revival in the end times is going to come out of Russia. I love that. I want to jump to your thoughts. You're talking about government overreach, tyrannical control, all that kind of stuff. Were you surprised at what took place in 2020 and 2021? Did you see that coming? I mean, maybe not just COVID, but the level of government intensity against the church and against really our way of life. Um, Well, we have been so blessed in this country to have, you know, lived in such peace. But... um, I think there were some things that I'd seen way going way back to 1987 I didn't recognize. Right. And uh, I think they unfolded, started to unfold during that time. Right. Uh, one of the things I saw in this vision of the harvest, I had a two and a half day experience where I saw the great harvest that was the end of the wow. age. And I wrote about it in a book then called The Harvest. But I saw America taking a real sharp turn to the left. Wow. And, uh, but then we would turn back to the right and never again turn to the left. It's like learn every lesson. You got to learn. That's not the way we're called to go. But I was given a warning then that the danger then would be that we go too far to the right. Mm. And uh, I thought when Clinton was elected, okay, this has got to be it. America's never gone this far left. Right. That wasn't it. Then Obama, that has to be it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it absolutely has to be it. Now, 
this is it. <laughs> you wow. know, what we're experiencing now. We're going to learn some lessons. The whole wow. country's going to wake up. Wow. Come A on. lot of it's going to come because of the disaster that is created by what's coming across our southern border. Yeah. And we're going to go through a period of time when the U.S. is going to be broken up. Wow. We're going to see many states, if not all of them, turn against our federal government. Wow. But, you know. What, what's going to happen with that? What do you mean? Well, what I saw, the horrors that were released in the country because yeah. of the evil coming across our southern border. Yeah. Was so bad. I saw in this dream that I had that federal agents were fleeing from the states for their lives. They were being chased out. Wow. And uh, now I shared this. It went, pub, went viral pretty much years ago when I first had this, 10 years ago. And uh, But it was all coming across our southern border. It was something that came out of the bowels of hell. Wow. And the states, especially those on the border, Texas and uh, Arizona, those states, they were... I mean, what was released on them was like worse than anything we'd seen. seen since. It came up out of the old Mayan thing or the, right. the old ancient evil that was there. And uh, it, it was so terrible. I never, ever want to have a dream like that again. What I saw being done to us, but it's like our whole country turned against the federal government that had allowed this to happen. Wow. Had not defended our southern border. Wow. And uh, that's what really created the break up, breaking up of the states. Wow. Now, I saw us go through martial law. I saw that in 87 too. I saw it in a limited way. I saw it in a much more extensive way. And then I was told to pray for who the marshal is. There's someone who loves liberty, loves our constitution, loves the foundations that we were given and that will help restore the republic that we're called to be. But the end of the matter was, we became truly the United Nations, United wow. States as a nation. And, uh, but there were certain things we had to learn through this. So the end, the end of the dream was good. The end was very good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to track what year if I'm still going to be alive when that trip. I, I, me too. I thought all this was going to happen back in the really? 80s. So you, you <laughs> feel like the, the, the prophetic implications of that dream, you feel like that right now we are on that left trajectory like you were. Yeah. Yeah. I actually saw a hot war along our southern border. Really? I saw pitch battles. Wow. That was in 1987. Yeah. At the time, we... I was going over to Mexico once a week, you know. Right. I flew a lot of freight runs down to Juarez. And uh, so the, uh, you know, things have changed and I think the tables are set now, but we basically have the cartels running our southern border. Yeah. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. actually just down there um, and, and I wasn't, you know, there's this whole, whole, uh, movement in the church uh, that's gotten to the church about how borders are, e are, are evil and walls are bad and all this kind of stuff. And although we see them all throughout the Bible, we see them, even in the politicians that say that, have the biggest walls in front of their gate, you know, yeah. have the biggest security. But it really didn't hit home until I was on my friend's ranch. I was hunting on my friend's ranch, right? And he's like maybe 15 miles from the border maybe 12 miles from the border, and he was telling me, he's like, man, we're having, it's been so bad here. These are Mexican guys yeah. that run everything. And they're telling me, hey, it's been real bad here. They said, just make sure when you're in the stand, just be aware if, you know, we, we have drug runners coming through here. We have people that are kidnapping kids. They're, they're coming through our ranch. I'm like, you're a long way from the border, right? This is what I'm supposed to look for while I'm in the deer stand. I'm trying to look for deer. <laughs> And he's yeah. telling you, by the way, yeah. I'm standing there and all of a sudden these helicopters come in, these trucks come in, and they, 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 they finally found a whole bunch of guys that were smuggling drugs, that were smuggling kids across the border. This happened on the ranch that I was staying in. And these border patrol agents, who a lot of them are Hispanic, a lot of them love America, mm -hmm. a lot of them understand what's really happening, they were trying to wrestle these drug runners down to the ground and they were getting beat, man. 
I mean, it was like, oh, and I was, this was happening in front of me and it really started to bring, hit home like, hey, listen, people don't understand what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. People don't understand. And I think even the election, you're gonna see a lot of those border towns, they're gonna flip red. They're, they're, they're sick of it. They're over the, the drugs, the fentanyl is pouring. Fentanyl is the number one killer in America today. Yeah. Number one killer above everything else. So I don't know how that interprets to your, how that plays into your dream, how much of it was spiritual, how much of it was whatever, but I've seen the horrors of what's taking place down there and it's outrageous and it's only looking like it's getting worse. Well, true. And, you know, 98% of the people, or at least 95, I would say, are probably people we would love to have in our country. Right. Brought in right, the right, right way. Right, right, totally. Right now, our system is so broken, they can't come in the right way. Right, yeah. To, you know, they'll drive old age before they can get in. Right. But we need immigrants. We're built on immigrants. Right. You know, one of the things that determines if a nation is a sheep nation or, not, or a goat nation, when I was a stranger, you took me in. Right. You That's fed good. me. You gave me. Very good. So, you know, these are things we want to do, but right. some of the most evil people I believe on the planets are now trying to get in and they are yeah. getting in through our southern border. They're going to do unbelievably horrible things and we're going to learn for all time. No, every nation in the world has a border, yeah, has a gate, has a fence. Some of them have come down to some degree in the EU and things like that. But, you know, and you look, you know, I remember when the Pope came out and said, we build bridges, not walls. And the internet was full of pictures of the walls around the Vatican. <laughs> Take the your walls Biggest down. security in, in, in the world. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know. It yeah, and we don't, let, you know, I lock my doors at night and I have security on my house, not because I hate my neighbors, because I love my family. Yeah. You, you know, I, I love family. my family and I, my neighbors are great. They're amazing, but I love my family, you know, and I think that it, and but I understand what you're saying. I'm just, it, it, that dream is so intense. There's a whole lot more to it. Uh, yeah, I, about two thirds to three quarters of the things I saw in 1987 have now come to pass. Wow. And I didn't know a timeline. I was given no timeline. I didn't know if it was imminent or what. Right, right. It's unfolded over decades, but now it's like everything. We're coming to a critical mass Right. right now. I think we're in for the uh, some real exciting next few years, and it's gonna be a Psalm 91 situation. Right. But that's harvest time. Yeah, come you, on. You know, in Joshua 3. Come on, it's so good. It said, you know, the Jordan River overflowed its banks all the days of the harvest. Jordan River represented death. That's why Jesus and John baptized in the Jordan. That's the Jordan River empties into the Dead right. Sea. Yeah. They had to cross death. Right. Cross through death to their promised land. Right. And you know what Paul said in Acts 14, 22, through many tribulations shall we enter the kingdom of God. Right. So in every tribulation or trial, there's a gateway right. to the kingdom. Yeah. And all these great trials that are now coming upon us, there are gonna be huge doors to the kingdom. Wow. So what we wanna do is instead of looking, oh no, more trials, more tribulation, look for the door. Come on. Enter the kingdom. This is the greatest opportunity we're going to ever have. Man, I love that. That's so encouraging. What <laughs> yeah. What do you feel, where do you feel like the church is right now in America and how do we position ourselves post-COVID, post all this stuff to be the net that catches this great harvest? Well, in general, I think, you know, we have some great movements, great churches, mm -hmm. some of the most awesome prayer movements probably in history. Um, but overall, I would say the church in America is the weakest it's been in my lifetime, wow. maybe ever. There are some strengths, you know. Yeah. But again, you got to get dry before the fire. Yeah. You know, you won't burn unless you're dry wood. Yeah. And America's dry wood right now, so I'm looking for a revival. Come on. I mean, we're we're poised for that. Uh, I think we have been in the Laodicean lukewarm state for decades, and it's gotten a lot worse. We, uh, but you know, the greatest promises given to any of the churches in Revelation were given to the overcomers of the Church of Laodicea. Yeah. 
It's like this lukewarmness, because you have everything you need, can be one of the most difficult right. things to overcome. Right. So those who overcome this are given the greatest. And what was the promise? Yeah. That he would come in. Come on. And sup with us. And it says, he who overcomes in this church, you're not going to be a part of that great company that stands in front of the throne. You will sit with me on my throne. Wow. That's, I believe we're going to see unprecedented spiritual authority released from those overcomers who come right. through the lukewarmness right. that much of the church, not just in the U.S., but in the West, yeah. has been. Yeah, I, I, uh, it's interesting because when, when COVID happened, I didn't have a huge heart for America. Um, then I, I had four kids and they started to grow up and I started to wonder what the nation's going to look like when they were teenagers. And then when 2020 happened and everything shut down, we started to see a harvest in a very difficult time. You know, obviously taking, going into Portland, going into Seattle, going into Los Angeles, going into New York, doing doing something in a season of such heaviness and government, you know, tyrannical mandates and divisiveness with the, the racial stuff and then the election in the middle of that. And I started to notice that these times of polarization produced a, a hunger and kind of removed the, the gray area in the middle. Like people couldn't be in the gray anymore, yeah. you know? And, and so I started to not be afraid of it anymore. Like, I, and I think that that's what I want to encourage people with. And even your, the prophetic visions that you've seen is, is to not let the church be afraid. Like these things must come to pass. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said in, the, in Matthew 24, wars, rumors of wars, all that kind of stuff. These are necessary and the end is still to come. You know, the gospel will be preached to, at the ends of the earth and then the end will come. And so these things are necessary. How, what, what is your encouragement to believers that are getting pounded every day by this, the sexualization of kids, this indoctrination, this invited administration shoving the woke left stuff down our throats, right? The uh, inflation, the economy, uh, a lot of uncertainty, the war, gas prices. I mean, we're just hit all day with all this stuff. What's your encouragement to Christians to like stick it out? Like, how do we wake up every day and say, God's still gonna move and it not feel cheap? Well, he is moving. Yeah. We gotta stop looking for him and start looking at him. Yeah. You know, like the two men on the road to Emmaus, he came in a form they weren't expecting. That's good. I <laughs> and love I think that. he loves to do that. Yeah to come in a form we're not expecting. And and I think he is this time too, but uh, I think we're seeing the first stages of a, another great awakening, yeah. which it's gonna have, you know, all of our crises right now are beyond human remedy. I mean, if we didn't learn, we can't <laughs> yeah. trust the medical community right. like we thought we could. Right, right, <laughs> you know, right, we can't, right. The economists, there isn't anybody up there that really knows what's going on in the economy. It's right. like they're up there turning dials to see what <laughs> happens. And they, everything's going nuts. But, you know, we're not going to, there's only one out. We yeah. have to have God now. We right. have right. to have revival. Right. And I think that's a good place to be in. He does his best stuff then. Yeah. When there is no other way we can turn to. Right. No other. And, you know, the Holy Spirit, the first mention of him in Scripture, you know, he's moving. Right. I don't see where he ever stopped. Mm -hmm. So he's always moving. And then you have, he moved upon it where it's often translated formless and void. Mm -hmm. The earth, that was really chaos. Right. The, the real root there. I think the Holy Spirit knows how to deal with chaos. Yeah. Look at the great creation he brought. Come forth. on. Look out of that. So we need to, regardless of how bad the chaos is, I think the Holy Spirit loves it. Yeah. He's like, okay, this one I do my best work. Come on. So we need to understand through many tribulations, we'll enter the kingdom. All yeah. of these tribulations going on are just more opportunities to enter his kingdom, build our lives on his kingdom yeah. first, and watch the incredible things the Holy Spirit is going to do in this chaos. Wow. And it, my yeah. last question, I love that. I love that the Holy Spirit loves chaos. That is so good. You've seen in the, in the, you've seen the, this kind of prophetic movement in the nineties. Then you saw this, the prayer movement, the call, 
you saw this, the houses of prayers pop up. We've seen some measure of the church engaging more governmentally. Where, what do you think the next thing is or what is the next? I'm not trying to say what does revival look like, but it, it's like God highlights different elements in different seasons and you've seen so many of them. So what, what, what do you feel like is coming or what does it look like? Or how can we know this is, this is how God has, has his fingerprints on stuff? Well, uh, I think that, you know, when you see him and when you know him, you know, start to know his workmanship. Yeah. It's like the, the great, you know, an authority on one of the great painters or artists, they don't just know it's his pain because of his signature. They know his brush strokes. Wow. They know him that well. And I think if we have truly been seeking him, getting to know him, and it says his sheep know his voice, we should, right. all of his people should know his voice. Right. Uh, all of these things, I think he's very recognizable. He's moving dramatically right now. Yeah. And you know, in Matthew 24, when he gives a whole discourse, right. when they ask him, when will these things be, which are the destruction of Jerusalem? Right. Then they ask him another question, and the signs of the end of the age. Yeah. Um, they actually asked him, they didn't talk about, they didn't say his coming. Right. They said, you're, what are the signs of your presence? Wow. Look at that word. It's a Greek word, parousia. That means presence. It's, you're not coming if you're already present. Right. It was not until later in the chapter when he talks about coming on the clouds right. that he used the Greek word for coming. Right. Everywhere else, there, there's something of a time of his presence right. in a magnificent, awesome way that is going to precede his coming. And all of the signs of his presence, and there are many in the Old Testament, and those that he gave there are all unfolding right now. He is among us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he is here right now. He is present in a very special, powerful way. And we're going to see him manifesting. We're going to see it like in the Daniel 2, the yeah. statue that represents all man's kingdoms right. are coming down. Right. But that little stone is turned into a mountain, which represents a government. Yeah. The kingdom of God is not only coming, it says there will be no end to the increase. Come on. Yeah. So throughout eternity, right. it's going to be increasing. Yeah. That's why he created the universe expanding. It's going yeah. to forever be increasing. Now, is his government increasing in us? Yeah. You know, that's a real key thing. We don't want it to just... Right. And I think to the degree that he is, that we built our lives on seeking his kingdom first, doing everything for the sake of the gospel. Yeah. You know, living our lives for him, not just for ourselves, that I think he's going to be able to use us to first proclaim the gospel of his kingdom, mm -hmm. the greatest message of hope the world has ever heard, and gospel means good news, not bad news. He's not, he's not coming back to destroy the world. He didn't go to the cross to destroy it, but to save it. Yeah. And he's coming back to redeem it and restore it. Yeah. So we're going to see all of these things taking place. But uh, I think you're going to see great messages of hope coming forth too. Wow. And uh, I know two friends of mine who've produced some pretty big movies. The Lord told me 20 some years ago, these two are going to join together and bring hope to the world in a great time of darkness. They, they just connected this year. It's like the brothers, what they're into now, I've never seen anything or heard anything like it. Wow. And it, I could see right away, this is going to bring hope to the world. Wow. It's going to be a presentation of the gospel, the good news of the coming kingdom, mm -hmm. And we have with certainty in the biblical prophecy, everything's going to be fixed. Yeah. We can't mess up the environment too bad that he can't fix it. There's nothing we can mess up that bad. He's going to restore, as Peter said, all things. Yeah. And this is what I believe the groundwork is being laid for. But the, the things that we built that were not built on his kingdom have to come down. Yeah. And they are. Wow. Wow. Last thing. Um, the kind of the purpose of this movement. Why, why, how and why, or let's just say why, why should believers engage on a government level? Why should they get involved? 
Why should they hold the line in this season? Well, our basic calling is to be salt and light. Yeah. And that's in, to me, you know, to go into all the earth, it's not just geographical. Yeah. It's every field of influence, yeah. every major thing, into entertainment, into the media, into all mm -hmm. these things. We should be yeah. taking those high ground, yeah. that high ground, and government is one of the important ones. And I think, you know, you don't want to do it unless it's your calling, but you don't yeah. want to do anything unless yeah. it's your calling. Yeah. If it's your calling, though, you don't want to yeah. run from your calling. Yeah. You know, when Moses, the Lord called him, and he, his first response was, I'm not adequate. Yeah. I can't even talk well. Well, that sounds real humble. That is unbelievable arrogance. And yeah. God got mad at him. It says the anger of the Lord burned against Moses for that. And he said, okay, throw your staff down. <laughs> and his staff, which represents your calling, turned into a serpent wow. and chased him until he picked it back up. Now, I know a lot of people that have been running, they think they're running from the devil, and they are. It's a serpent chasing them, but they're really running from their calling. Wow. And it's a serpent, and it's going to chase them until they pick it back up again. Wow. So we we just need to know our calling, <laughs> get up, go for it. It's not about who we are. Right. None of us are adequate. Yeah. It, and that's what Moses was saying. My inadequacy is greater than your right, adequacy. Right, totally, yeah. And God's saying, you don't understand how pit pitifully small you are. Yeah. You're pure. I chose you because you're weak. You're ignorant. Yeah. You're foolish. Yeah. You're all these things yeah. that we talk about, those he calls. Yeah. And, uh, but his strength is made perfect in that. So we've got to keep our attention, our faith on him, not who we are, but we've got to boldly walk in our calling. Wow. Woo. That's mm -hmm. good. I will be listening to this one for a long time. Thank you so much for coming on. Well, good to see Thank you Thank you so much. So so good to be here in, in Fort Mill, South Carolina, yeah. Morningstar. Come check it out if you're ever in the area. They're, they're, God's moving in this place. I heard y'all are just, things are just exploding. Wow. <laughs> and uh, we're excited, we're excited to be here. Spread the word, spread this podcast, and uh, we love you. Thanks for being on.